one of the things that I love about the Democrats is not only that they are the party of strength. Like when I think about the Democrats, I think about a fist that's closed, you know, very, very tight like that. Like this, this is what I think when I think about Democrats. But uh, also the audacity, the balls that they are. I wish I would have balls like this. I mean, uh, you, you could probably have an entire nation by, by inseminating women with, with the balls like that. I mean, look at this, right? You have Mr. Newsom here um, explaining about theft in Scat Francisco. Listen to this. Listen, listen. He says, sir, uh, you dropped this. And he comes back, picks it up, and keeps walking out. As we're checking out, the woman says, oh, he's just walking out. He didn't pay for that. I said, well, why are you stopping? She goes, oh, the governor. I swear to God, true story. I'm a mom's great. The governor lowered the threshold. There's no, there's no, there's no accountability. There's no, I said that's just not true. And I, she got, I said we have the tenth toughest, nine hundred fifty dollars, the tenth toughest in America. She doesn't even know what I was talking about. By the way, it's the tenth toughest in America. Look it up. No one gives a damn about right. it. And I said it's just not true. There's still a stop. I said well we don't stop them because of the governor. And then she goes, she looks at me twice, and then she freaks out. She calls everyone over, wants to take photos. I'm like, no, I'm not taking a photo. We're having a conversation. Where's your manager? How are you blaming the governor? And it was, you know, $380 later. And I was like, why am I spending $380? Everyone can walk the hell right out. So, so he literally wanted to talk with the manager because he couldn't gaslight that employee. Okay, uh, maybe he doesn't know, but the rules in Scat Francisco, and, and I checked it up online, if you have a person that steals less than $950 worth of goods, that is a misdemeanor. That is a misdemeanor. And usually the store owners are not allowed to touch the criminal. There have been cases where the store owner did try to apprehend the criminal, or, or even called the cops and the company fired that employee that they have policies in these places in order to make sure that the criminals aren't being hassled with right so so what ends up happening is that as you can see here when walgreen ends up closing stores in neighborhoods that are overrun by theft you have like the democrats coming up right like the the people from the same party as Newsom and, and call these stores racist, like they, they are racist, right? So if you stop criminals, you're racist. If you shut down the store, you're racist. It's kind of difficult to do business in San Francisco like that. Also difficult to do business in places like Chicago, but the solution would be quite simple, by the way. I mean, you know, if Mr. Newsom is, is confused, it's like, why does he have to pay and other people don't? I mean... There, there's a very simple solution. Um, allow me. I, I would do the investment, by the way. I, I, I would actually make a loan and invest into this to hire a couple of professional security guards with maces and batons. And you train them on, on how to reasonably make use of force. And I guarantee to you, after you have like a couple of videos on TikTokie with what happens to criminals that, that go and try to steal from stores... Um, you would have theft go down dramatically over a period of a couple of months, you know? And unlike any other government investment, like this wouldn't go from the pocket of the taxpayer. This uh, would, wouldn't cause uh, any issues. If it happens that it's not successful, if it happens that I'm talking shit and I don't know what I'm talking about, you know, I, I would be willing to, to take the, the brunt of the losses. The baton industry would probably uh, have record sales, though, because because they break easily, you know, like no matter what. The, the, seriously, like if you're working in the police, the, the old ones that they used to make, like the, those were more resistant, the nightsticks, right? But, but the, the more modern one, not so good, but yeah, batons and mace, that's all you need. And all of a sudden, the crime rate goes... Why can't we have that, hmm? Oh, yeah, it's election year. I almost forgot. It's election year. This is why Mr. Newsom is already... It's like, oh, I'm, I I couldn't believe it. I, I don't understand. Why is that person having... Yeah, you know, like, this is what happens when you normalize it. Because you create a culture. I love it that the Democrats are like, oh, my God, sexist jokes create sexismus. 
Racist jokes, oh, they create racism, oh, South Park, so dangerous, oh. But they don't believe that uh, allowing people to shoplift uh, creates a culture where shoplifting is normalized. It's not even that, like, it's it's criminal behavior that's normalized. Because, no, like, like he actively expressed it in a, in a very interesting way. Why should he pay for it when other people don't? Now, now, put yourself into the shoes of the person that doesn't pay, right? And let's assume that person is a teenager, like, he's still learning the world. He, he still doesn't know how the world functions, right? And, and he will also ask himself this question. Why are these other people so stupid and they are actually paying? Now, what, what that happens in the mind of the criminal is, is that there is like a, a ladder, a social hierarchy, and he positions himself on top of the social hierarchy. He, he views himself as intelligent, as smarter, right? Because he looks at the system and he is using the system as intended. It was made for him. And he doesn't understand why other people are so dumb and so stupid that, that they do not use the system the way it's intended. So you now have like a hardened criminal. Now, now he has convinced himself beyond the shadow of a doubt that what he is doing is the correct way. And, and, and he looks at other people as if they're lesser. It's like, well, why, why are they as smart as I am? And I'm telling you this because I did grow up in a neighborhood with people from all walks of life. And this is how criminals think. Like, they generally view themselves to be superior to the law-abiding citizens. Uh, you know, who, who are dumb. They're idiots. It's like they're going to work. They're wasting their life. They're going to work every day. They wake up at 7 a.m. They have to put up with a, a annoying boss. And No, that's not the way you should live. Like, the way you should live is on the street. This is the correct way of life. You, you do a little bit of hassle. You do a little bit of thing. And all of a sudden, you're rich. And you make it. And you're smart. Everyone else is dumb and stupid, right? And, and this was like with a couple of neighborhoods. But like when you have like an entire culture where you know that it's a problem because it gets to the point where uh, stores like Walgreens are, are shutting down entire supermarkets due to the neighborhoods that they are in. Like you, you notice that the problem must be so severe. I mean, it does take a lot of issues in order to get a, a place like Walgreens to shut down, right? And instead of, like, addressing the problem and tackling the issue, it's like, oh, racism, oh, racism. It's like, yeah, you can, you know, you can shut racism at the wall as much as you want, but the store isn't dead anymore. They already left. Anyway, right, uh, let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.